Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Uh, I would like to... May I have your attention, please? Thank you very much. Uh, the Joint Special Envoy, um, Mr. Kofi Annan, will have an opening statement. And then we will be taking questions. Mr. Annan. Gosh, we have a mounted up microphone. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. As you know, I arrived uh, yesterday and I met with the President this morning. I had earlier met the Foreign Minister Mwane and I also had the chance to meet with a whole range of um, uh, civil society activists and opposition uh, figures. In my meeting with President Hassan, I conveyed in context the great concern of the international community about the violence in Syria, including the recent shocking events in Kuli. I should note that he condemned the killings too. The Security Council has made clear the need for these killings to be investigated and for those responsible to be held accountable. I also note that the government of Syria is organizing its own investigations and that is very encouraging. In my meeting with the President, I express appreciation for the cooperation that the Syrian government has extended to the UN, enabling us to deploy the military observers uh, quickly. However, I share with President Assad my assessment that the six-point plan is not being implemented as it must. We are at a tipping point. The Syrian people do not want a future their future to be one of bloodshed and division. Yet the killings continue and the abuses are still with us today. As I reminded the President, the international community will soon be reviewing the crisis in Syria, will be reviewing the situation. I appeal to him to take bold steps now, not tomorrow, now, to create momentum for the implementation of the plan. This means the government and all government backed militias could stop all military operations and show maximum restraint. I appeal to the President as the government and stronger partner in this conflict to be bold for the Syrian people. The violence stopped, and we all remember, the violence stopped before. On the 12th of April, there was calm. There is no reason it cannot stop again. Both sides stopped on the 12th of April, and the time we can do what is required is the will and the determination and concern for the Syrian people. I appeal to the armed opposition to cease acts of violence. And I also ask all states with influence to impress upon the government and all parties the need for a cessation of violence in all its forms, including continuing human rights abuses. I also strongly appeal to the President to exercise his power and release detainees. This is a key part of the system and is absolutely vital if confidence is to be created. It is also essential that access is granted to all detainees on the basis of detention. In addition, President Assad and I agree on the importance of humanitarian aid flowing to all parts of the country, including unfettered access for the UN and aid agencies. <coughs> I urge the President to respect freedom of peaceful protest and to ensure that people are allowed to voice their views without fear. I noted 
and more terrorists, more foreign journalists are gaining visas to enter Syria. And I encourage the President to continue along this path and further open up. Let me stress once again, the violence must stop and the six-point plan must be implemented comprehensively. I need the President to act now. I need other parties to do their part. Let me finish with a message to all Syrians. My dear friends, I know that you want a peaceful future. We must not let the bitterness and the bloodshed consume your country. For the sake of Syria and for the region, we must end this violence and begin to restore hope in a political transition to a democratic future, a future in which all communities have their place. I am totally committed to this course, and I'm sure we all are. Thank you very much, and I will now take your questions. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, if you would please identify yourselves before you ask your questions. And I apologize in advance that we don't have any simultaneous uh, interpretation um, from and into Arabic, but if you want to ask a question in Arabic, um, Mr. Anam will answer it in English. Uh, I will translate it to him uh, from Arabic into English, if you like. So, um, let's take the first question from the gentleman over there, please. Yes, you. And uh, identify yourself, please. Um, my name is Solomon van Hogan, NOS Television from Holland. Sorry, can, can we have a little side? Can you start again? Yes, yes NOS from Holland. Give him a microphone, please. The camera crew is asking me to sit, so I will. Uh, my name is Simon van Oven, uh, NOS Television from Holland. Can you please uh, tell us how Mr. Assad reacted to uh, your basic reiteration of your six-point plan? And how do you judge the decision of a large number of European countries to expel the uh, Syrian ambassador today? Thank you. you know, we, as I said, we had a frank discussion. I didn't uh, expect him to give me answers on the spot. But I hope he is uh, considering them here to come on board and I hope we will see some action uh, soon. Uh, obviously, he will need to uh, consult and, and, and move forward uh, with it. But he seemed open and I would hope we will see the uh, results. It, it is not for me, it's for his people and his country and I hope as a leader uh, he will act. On the European uh, issue, I think it's a, it's a sovereign decision uh, that they have taken, but obviously it shows a great concern in the international community regarding the massacre in Kuwait. Thank you. Thank you. The lady here is <laughs> ما هو المستقبل الذي ينتظر سوريا برأيكم خاصة وأن زيارتكم هذه ترافقت مع تصعيد دبلوماسي تجلى بإنهاء مهمة أعمال خمسة سفراء سوريين في دول غربية ذات أهمية ترافق كذلك مع عقوبات اقتصادية على الشعب السوري أو على الحكومة السورية تمس الحياة اليومية بالنسبة للشعب السوري the question is from the Kuwaiti news agency, uh, and if the six-part plan is not implemented, sir, what, uh, what do you predict for the future of Syria, especially on a day when five countries have uh, taken action against um, um, uh, Syrian uh, diplomats, and also in the light of sanctions imposed on the Syrian people? If the plan is not implemented, I, I would worry uh, for, for the future of Syria. I would worry about the uh, stability uh, in the country. As, as we see around us, there is a loss of violence. And we need to create an avenue to bring people together and lead them to the table. The six point plan, in its essence, is a political proposal. It's a plan that will pacify the environment create a light atmosphere for political negotiations. And I hope we will still work hard to get that done. If we do not, may God help us. 
the question uh, I think is probably is better if answer is answered so because uh, what uh, the young lady is saying is that their correspondent in Deir Zouf was accompanying uh, the observers uh, as they were identifying bodies and he was helping move some of the bodies. No, he was not helping. He was just filming the... He was filming? Yes. Right. So you speak some, perfect some armed English. Some armed men um, kidnapped him and uh, the body is now in his car or are now in his car and he's with the uh, armed men and he said that I am related to the uh, UN observers and they uh, denied the thing. They said, no, he's not with us. I get the gist of your question, but let me, it's a question obviously, if I was there, I cannot deal with it, but I would hope it is something that uh, uh, eventually, I think it's something you should report, and I think the answer is here, they have heard the question and the complaint, and I would urge you, when, at the end of the session of the press conference, to see the announcement officials and then we discuss that. But this violence is happening in front Next question. Thank you very much. Can we take another question? Please, from the gentleman in front. We try and get everybody in. Asaf Abul BBC Arab. صدر بيان في جنيف الأستاذ أحمد الفوزي أصدر يقول أن سيد كوفي عنان طلب الحكومة السورية بخطوات جسورة لتنفيذ خطة كوفي عنان النقطة الثانية عبر عن قلقه وقلق المجتمع الدولي عما يحصل في سوريا والنقطة الثالثة وصف محادثاته مع الرئيس الأسد بالصريحة بينما الرئيس الأسد في بيان رسمي سوري قال أن ما ينجح خطة كوفي عنان هو وقف الأعمال الإرهابية ومنع تدفق الأسلحة إلى سوريا. هل يمكن أن نرى أن هنالك خلافا في وجهة النظر أثناء المحادثة؟ شكرا. بس أنت أكيد بتتكلم الإنجليزية بطلاقة بطلاقة أيضا مش كده؟ نعم. The gentleman is from BBC Arabic, sir, and he says that your spokesman in Geneva apparently said that uh, you um, asked uh, President Assad to take bold steps. Uh, and uh, uh, that you were also concerned about the situation in Syria. Uh, and at the same time, um, President Assad has said that the uh, crux of the problem in Syria is the smuggling of arms across borders uh, uh, to the armed opposition or to the militants and to, uh, uh, the, did you say, uh, 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 terrorist acts and the smuggling uh, of weapons. Is there a difference of opinion between the two of you? The, the president indeed the same to, to me. Uh, and um, uh, when you look at the, uh, the situation on the ground, it, in reality, you have several uh, actors and people on the ground. We have the government forces, we have the opposition forces. There are terrorist activities which we all see. Uh, but I think uh, we, we believe that to, to bring peace to Syria, the government and the opposition uh, armed forces, and whoever is fighting on the other side. Yesterday, I used a phrase that when we talk of peace, we are not giving a message of peace only to the government side or to the armed opposition. It's to everyone with a gun. Everyone with a gun must understand that the people of Syria want peace and eventually we will need to find a political way out and put down our guns. But the way the six-point plan is uh, uh, elaborated indicates that we can see uh, two sides. And we have asked the government as a bigger partner, as a more responsible uh, party, to take certain bold steps to be able to encourage confidence and momentum for the others. That was the basis of the six-point plan. And uh, we are encouraging this. You have a lady in the back there with the microphone, please. Hello. 
Telesuri. Telesuri. Telesuri agency. And his question is, is about <coughs> the, uh, the arming of the opposition and the smuggling of weapons across the border and the countries who are uh, assisting in uh, providing weapons to the opposition. What are you doing to prevent this from happening? First of all, as a joint envoy for the uh, UN and the Arab League, my mandate is clear. My mandate is for us to work with the Syrians and all to say to find a peaceful solution. And therefore, I'm not one who is going to encourage or promote militarization of, of, of the conflict. And the UN is not in, in, in favor of further militarization of the conflict. Um, I, must, I must say, we have five minutes to go, so I'm going to take three questions. <laughs> We're going to start with the lady here, and then I think two more. Please, 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 please go ahead. Uh, Susie J of the Times of London. Um, what do you say to the widespread reports that um, residents of Pula tried to contact and succeeded in contacting UN observers on the night um, of the, uh, the massacre, and that the UN did nothing to contact them? I don't think I can answer the question. This is news to me, and I would advise you to give you the same advice I gave my brother. And Hans Smith is here to beg your question, and you should follow up with him after the press conference. Yeah, take the lady here. from Dunia TV. Mr. there is a remarkable increase in violence since the mission has been started in Syria. Uh, uh, and uh, besides, uh, there are statements by the opposition that it's terrorist against Syrian people. So, uh, how will you evaluate your mission in light of this uh, development? And are you feel about your mission will succeed in the end and when? First of all, let me say that uh, the monitors are not independent actors. They are here to help. They are here to help the Syrian people. And we are all here because of our feeling and um, we share the pain of the Syrian people. We, are, we put your welfare at the center of everything that we do. At the end of the day, I think we should all be clear. Those who can end the conflict are the protagonists. Those who are with the guns confronting them, the government are benefited of the actions that the government can take. And the six point plan makes it clear. We've also indicated the actions we expect the opposition and the armed groups to take. We have also appealed to governments around the world not to further militarize this. Uh, Process. The observers are here to help. If you wish, the UN is here offering a ladder for both for everyone to climb down and focus on the needs of the people. To pull the situation back from the brink. They are not armed. You've seen the weapons here of this are. How would one expect 300 armed, unarmed men? to stop the conflict. I get very distressed when I read in the press that the monitors have not stopped the war, that the monitors have failed. They did not come here to take on the fighters. They came to offer an opportunity, an opportunity for people to make a choice, to accept the cessation of the violence and go through the six point plan, leading the political uh, settlement political transition. And I hope this chance will be taken. Pointing fingers at the monitors <coughs> it is a wrong thing to do. And pointing fingers always at outsiders. Yes, they are involved. But there are measures that we can also take. I hope the government will take to really try and end the situation. I'm not saying this because they are my monitors. Even if they were not, I would have made the same argument. 
Hello, I'm Mohamed from Saudi News Channel. Mr. Anan, is there any plan to increase the number of observing monitoring in Syria? So some states asked for this to increase their number. And what about the logistic support for them? Even also some Syrian parties asked yesterday to withdraw this mission and to announce that it's failing. From that uh, national uh, Syrian National Council. Thank you. Let me uh, say that as from the answer I gave to the previous question, you will uh, understand what I'm going to say. I don't think the solution is more monitors. The solution is people acting on an agreement they have signed on. People implementing the six month People decided we love our country, we love our people, and we are not going to kill each other. And that the bloodshed must stop. That is where and how we end. Them. They can't do it. It's not the monitors. And, and, and so the, the, and those who believe that the monitors are failed, I would suggest it's a bit easy. They just got here. And they can do even more if other parties cooperate with them. Thank you. The lady in the green scarf, please. Okay, Mr. Anand. Turn on the microphone, please. We have been at the entrance of Hula. Um, Could you we, identify yourself? My name is Catalina Gomez from NTN24 from Latin America. Um, we have been in the entrance of Hula, and we could see with our eyes the situation over there. And we also know that the people who are inside are really, really having bad time from inside. Did you get any compromise from both or three sides to stop the killing, to stop the bad situation there, and to get some help to these people who are there? As I said, we uh, I discussed it in uh, intensive with the foreign minister and with the uh, president who are doing their own investigation. And as they are saying, there are our people. And we are, we are also concerned about them. And uh, we discussed the question of humanitarian assistance, getting access to everyone in need, and making sure it reaches everyone. And I would be surprised if they are not taking measures to make sure for those who would get uh, the assistance they need. Thank you very much. We'll take one last question. Uh, my name is Human from the Chinese News Agency. Uh, I have a question for you, sir. Uh, during your meeting with Syrian officials, uh, have you agreed upon a new timetable for the implementation of your plan? Uh, not specifically. Uh, we didn't agree on a specific timetable. But I made it clear that it's not an open ended process. And that uh, the time is coming sooner rather than later when the international community will need to take an assessment as to how things are going and what uh, further action or uh, activities may be necessary. Thank you very much. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.